Hello, welcome to Heart of the Tribe. My name is Shell Wagner and I'm so glad you came to join me today. We are still in our series, Preparing for Pesach. And today we're going to be in Jasher chapter 66. I'm gonna just start right in, all right? At that time died Hadad, the son of Badad, king of Edom, and Samla from Marish Ka. From the country of the children of the east reigned in his place. Okay, I said that wrong. And Sam Law from Mer Mes Rakah from the country of the children of the east reigned in his place. In the thirteenth year of the reign of Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, um, which I believe they had just re renamed Marar because of the very hard task that he was putting on them. His name was Malol, but the children of Yashorel decided to change his name to Marar because he was bitter, <laughs> all right? He was causing bitter labor. In the 13th year of the reign of Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, which was the 125th year of Yasharel going down into Mitzrayim, Samla had reigned over Edom 18 years. And when he reigned, he drew forth his host to go and fight against Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, and the children of Ketim, because they had made war against Angius, king of Africa, and they destroyed his whole army. So we're still dealing with wars and rumors of wars throughout the region, throughout the kingdoms that are on the earth at the time, right? But we're looking for Yasharel's story in the midst of all that, okay? Verse 4. But he did not engage with him, for the children of Esau prevented him, saying, He was their brother. So Samla listened to the voice of the children of Esau and turned back with all his forces to the land of Edom and did not proceed to fight against Zepho, the son of Eliphaz. And Pharaoh, and, and just for review, Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, Eliphaz was the 13-year-old son of Esau whom he sick to go and kill Jacob when Jacob was making his journey um, back to the land of Ur of the Kazdim to go visit Uncle uh, uh, Lavan and claim his brides, okay? All right, so that's who this was. So now this Zepho is Eliphaz's son. All right. Verse 5, And Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, heard this thing, saying, Samla, king of Edom, has resolved to fight the children of Ketim, and afterward he's going to come and fight Mitzrayim. So he's strategizing, you know, according to political worldwide events and occurrences, what does he believe is going to come upon his nation? And this is what he's seeing, Right. And when the Mitzrayim heard this matter, they increased the labor upon the children of Yasharel. Okay, they're like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, build our defenses. You've got to build our walls. You're our slave labor, and you need to do your job faster and better. Build back better now, right? Okay, so when, when, and when the Mitzrayim heard this matter, they increased the labor upon the children of Yasharel, lest Yasharel should do unto them as they did unto them in, the, in their war with the children of Esau in the days of Hadad. They're still very afraid of the children of Yasharel. They don't trust them. They've enslaved them. What They had lived in peace, and after... Uh, Joseph and all the brothers died out. Another Pharaoh arose that had no respect unto Joseph, right? So this leadership had totally switched over and it was not the, the leadership of the country was not the same as it had been when Joseph and his brothers were there. So that's what their descendants are having to deal with is this change in leadership. Okay. So the Mitraim said unto the children of Yasharel, Hasten, and do your work, and finish your task, and strengthen the land, lest the children of Esau, your brethren, should come and fight against us. For on your account will they come against us. Okay, suddenly, all the troubles of the nation are the fault of the children of Yasharel. How does that happen? Right? How does that happen to where every problem that this nation now has because of their own decisions and their own policies, their own deceit, their own treachery, now it's not their fault 
It's the fault of the children of Yasharel. How does that happen? Wickedness in high places. That's how that happens. Okay, we know that. We're living it today. Wickedness in high places. Verse 8. And the children of Yasharel did the work of the men of Mitzrayim day by day. And the Mitzrayim afflicted the children of Yasharel in order to lessen them in the land. They're still thinking if we can make this hard enough, awful enough, it'll kill them. The burden that we're going to put on them, it's designed to kill them. Okay. But as the Mitzrayim increased the labor upon the children of Yasharel, so did the children of Yasharel increase and multiply. It had the opposite effect. Wow. And all Mitzrayim was filled with the children of Yasharel. And in the 125th year of Yasharel's going down into Mitzrayim, all the Mitzrayim saw that their counsel did not succeed against Yasharel, but that they increased and grew, and the land of Mitzrayim and the land of Goshen were filled with the children of Yasharel. So all the elders of Mitzrayim and its wise men came before the king and bowed down to him and sat before him. And all the elders of Mitzrayim and the wise men thereof said unto the king, May the king live forever. You did counsel us the counsel against the children of Yasharel, and we did unto them according to the word of the king. But in proportion to the increase of the labor, so do they increase and grow in the land. And behold, the whole country is filled with them. Now, therefore, our Lord and King, the eyes of all Mitraim are upon you to give them advice with your wisdom. Uh, even as I'm reading it, can't you hear, you know, the brown nosed politicians just bowing down, you know, speaking flattery, trying to stay in the good graces of the of the ruler, the ruling class, the ruling party, the ruling authority. You can see it happening all over in our nation right now, right? Okay, now therefore, our Lord and King, the eyes of all Mitzrayim are upon you to give them advice with your wisdom by which they may prevail over Yasharel to destroy them or to diminish them from the land. And the king answered them saying, give you counsel in this matter that we may know what to do unto them. So the king's now turning it around. Well, what do you think we should do to them? right? Because they flattered him well enough that now he's open to their suggestions, right? It's all this diplomacy. And an officer, one of the king's counselors, whose name was Ayav. Now, if I was saying that as an English translation, that name would be Job. That's right, Job. He was one of the counselors to Pharaoh in the time when they were devising evil against the children of Yasharel. Okay, here's what Ayov, Job, had to say. An officer, one of the king's counselors, whose name was Ayov, from Aram Naharayim, in the land of Uts, okay, answered the king, saying, If it please the king, let him hear the counsel of his servant. And the king said, the king said unto him, Speak. And Iov, Job, spoke before the king, the princes, and before all the elders of Mitzrayim, saying, Behold, the counsel of the king, which he advised formerly respecting the labor of the children of Yashrael, is very good, so diplomatic, so much flattery, puffing each other up. All right? The counsel of the king, which he advised formerly respecting the labor of the children of Yisrael, is very good, and you must not remove them from that labor forever. But this is the advice counseled by which you may lessen them. Okay, here's what I'm going to tell you to truly diminish them. Okay, if it seems good to the king, diplomatic, to afflict them. Behold, we have feared war for a long time. And we said, when Yasharel becomes fruitful in the land, they will drive us from the land in a, if a war should take place. If it please the king, 
Let a royal decree go forth and let it be written in the laws of Mitzrayim. Right? As Yul Brynner would say, let it be written, let it be done. I can't, I can't do the, the accent quite as well, but let it be written, let it be done, right? <laughs> okay, if it please the king, let a royal decree go forth and let it be written in the laws of Mitzrayim, which shall not be revoked, that every male child born to Yasharel, his blood shall be spilled upon the ground. What did Job tell him to do? Kill the baby boys. That was his advice. Kill the baby boys. You know, it's interesting, and I have to just kind of interject this here. These are This is just my thoughts on this. Take it for what it's worth. These are my thoughts on it. You know, we can realize that we've been on the wrong side. Repentance is open to all. It is Yah's desire that none of the wicked would perish, right? But that they would repent and come on his side. And I believe that this is what happened in the life of Job when we read his story. I believe he was part of this evil council that did this. So evil that he was saying, counseling, kill the baby boys, right? Evil to this level, okay? But yet, obviously, he repented and came into relationship, right? And he was a blessed man. However, when we sin, we can be forgiven and that sin is removed from us as far as the East is from the West, right? But it does not remove the consequences of that sin. We still have consequences to pay from that. And I believe that this is what we are seeing in the life of Job. Okay. So back to Jasher 66, 22. And by your doing this, when all the male children of Yasharel shall have died, the evil of their wars will cease. Let the king do so and send for all the every midwives and order them in this manner, matter to execute it. So the thing pleased the king and the princes and the king did according to the word of Iov, according to the word of Job. And the king sent for the every midwives to be called, of which the name of one was Shafra, and the name of the other, Pu'ah. And the midwives came before the king and stood in his presence. And the king said unto them, When you do the office of a midwife to the Ivri women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But if you will not do this thing, then I will burn you up and all your houses with fire. Here's the great thing. But the midwives feared Elohim and did not hearken to the king of Mitzrayim, nor to his words. And when the Ivri women brought forth to the midwife son or daughter, then did the midwife do all that was necessary to the child and let it live. Thus did the midwives all the days. Oh, praise Yah. At least the, the midwives did not love their lives unto death right? They, they gave up their, their right to life in service of Yah, saying, I'd rather lose my physical life than to obey this evil edict. I'm not going to be caught up on the wrong side. And I know that they were blessed for those decisions. And all across the world right now, people are being put in those kind of decisions. And if you're taking the incentive of the evil pharaohs that are in control. You may have the opportunity to repent, but your life is not going to be without consequences. And this thing was told to the king, and he sent and called for the midwives, and he said to them, Why have you done this thing and have saved the children alive? And the midwives answered and spoke together before the king, saying, Let not the king think that the every women are as the Mitz Mitzraith women, the women of Egypt. For all the children of Yasharel are lively. <laughs> they're like, this is a different people. These people are strong. That's what they're saying. And before the midwife comes to them, they're already delivered. And as for your handmaids, 
For many days no every woman has brought forth upon us, for all the Ivrith women are their own midwives, because they are lively. And Pharaoh heard their words and believed them. In this matter, and the midwives went away from the king, and Elohim dwelt, dealt well with them, and the people multiplied and waxed exceedingly. Okay, I'm going to go on. Well, no, I'm not. I'm going to stop here because I like trying to at least get through an entire chapter per video. So I'm going to stop there for today. All right. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you'll come back and join me next time. Shalom.